Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to lesson number five in our Manifest Destiny unit, where we are answering the overall essential question, how did the United States expand from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean? Today, we're going to learn about a rather painful and difficult chapter in our history, the war between the United States and Mexico. So today's essential question for this lesson is, how did the United States come into conflict with Mexico? Please write that on the left side of the line in your Cornell Focus Notes. First question we're going to ask is, what were the seeds of conflict? How did the United States come into conflict with Mexico, and we need to go back to lesson number four, where we learned about how Texas uh, gained its independence from Mexico and eventually was annexed by the United States. Uh, in the election of 1844, uh, the issue of Texas becoming part of the United States was a major issue in the campaign. So much as Henry Clay, the losing candidate in the 1844 election predicted, the Texas annexation did become a flashpoint with Mexico. Henry Clay basically said, if we annex Texas, we will have more war with Mexico. James K. Polk, the winner in that election, did not care. Um, he made promises in the 1844 election. It is often said that he is the first president to ever keep all of his campaign promises. Um, he promised that he would uh, gain Texas all the way to the Rio Grande, he would gain Oregon, he would gain New Mexico, and he would gain California for the United States. Um, so both countries basically disagreed over where the southern border of Texas should be. Uh, Mexico argued that it should be the Nueces River, which was much farther to the north, and the United States argued it should be the Rio Grande, which is much farther to the south. So here's the Nueces River right here. I'm tracing it with my cursor. And the Rio Grande is right here. And of course, the Rio Grande has the big bend, which therefore would have given the United States all of this territory here, uh, much more than if the Nueces River had been the border. In Mexico, the Rio Grande is referred to as the Rio Bravo del Norte, so out of respect, I'll put both of those river titles there. Um, James K. Polk was elected on a promise to gain Oregon, gain Texas, gain New Mexico, and gain California. He basically used um, aggressive stances towards gaining land as the basis on which he was elected, and he was successful in doing so, uh, following very much in the footsteps of Andrew Jackson. Um, so he saw this border dispute as an opportunity to keep his promises, and he intentionally exploited this border dispute with Mexico to get what he wanted. How, you may ask. Next left side question, what was the flashpoint of war? And you already have a precursor of this. You do know that... Uh, the border dispute over Texas is what's causing issues between the U.S. and Mexico. Uh, James K. Polk sent an emissary, Nicholas Slidell, to Mexico City to offer to buy California and New Mexico. Uh, the initial offering price was $25 million, uh, but Mexico was quite insulted and said, no, we don't feel like selling half of our country for $25 million. Please go away. Uh, it was insulted, and they refused to accept the money, and they refused to give up their territory. Who would, really? Let's be honest. Uh, President Polk then ordered 4,000 U.S. troops under the command of General Zachary Taylor, the gentleman you see pictured there, uh, into the disputed area in Texas, the area between the Nueces and Rio Grande Rivers, we basically sent troops over the Nueces River into the area that we claimed and Mexico claimed, and James K. Polk fully expected there to be a conflict when doing this. We were basically trying to provoke Mexico into attacking our troops, and they obliged. 
On April 25th, 1846, Mexican troops did attack General Taylor's forces patrolling along the Rio Grande in disputed territory. Basically, General Taylor's forces went right up to the line that the U.S. claimed, hoping that Mexico would attack and give the United States an excuse to start a war, and that is exactly what happened. President Polk therefore claimed that American blood had been shed on American soil, that's an exact quote, and used it as a pretense to declare war. Obviously, this was disputed territory. The United States was claiming it was American soil. Mexico was claiming it as a Mexican soil. So this was propaganda used to justify the initiation of the war, but it was also successful. Uh, there were some Americans who opposed this war, one of the most famous being Abraham Lincoln and Mark Twain, but the majority of the country had land fever the majority of the country believed in Manifest Destiny, and the majority of the country was behind this war effort. So our next left side question is, what were the main events of the war? The war lasted roughly two years, uh, but I'm just going to give you the Cliff's Notes version here, the most important things that happened. First of all, Mexico was outmanned and outgunned. Mexico had only been a country at this point for slightly more than 20 years, um, and most of Mexico's population was much farther south, and they did not have the economy the United States had, and they did not have the military the United States had. And Mexico was a very unstable country at that point. They had constant changes in leadership, constant changes in their constitution, um, we were a much more stable country at that point. Uh, U.S. troops under Stephen Kearney, the gentleman you see pictured there, marched from Kansas to New Mexico and basically took over New Mexico and Santa Fe without firing a shot. Mexican troops, to the extent that there were any, offered no resistance, and the citizens who were there um, basically just accepted what happened. There was no bloodshed, and New Mexico magically came under U.S. control. Uh, John C. Fremont was another general who uh, went west to California, and he launched a rebellion against the Mexican government there. Uh, governor Vallejo of Mexico was defeated. Uh, Kearney established what was known as the Bear Flag Republic, and for a very, very short time, California was actually an independent country, or so it claimed. Uh, Kearney and Fremont basically established uh, U.S. control over California, uh, Kearney, the Southern California area, San Diego, Los Angeles, and Fremont took over the Northern California area. So both California and New Mexico were now under U.S. control with very, very little resistance from Mexico. However, uh, the the forcing of Mexico to surrender and give up those lands was going to involve invading deep into Mexico, and that was going to prove to be much more challenging. Uh, the United States basically needed to break Mexico's will to fight in order to legitimize all of the territorial gains they have already made. So what happened in the U.S. invasion of central Mexico? Uh, first of all, the battle for central Mexico was far more intense. Mexico was defending its heartland in this case. Uh, the one thing you need to understand about New Mexico and California is there were very, very few Mexican citizens living there. It was sparsely populated. Um, it was not uh, administered with any kind of heavy hand by Mexico. They had very few troops there. So it was land that was technically part of Mexico, but was really mostly still inhabited by the natives. Central Mexico was a different story. Uh, general Santa Ana, you may remember him from the story of Texas. Sometimes he's just a general. Sometimes he's the president. It goes back and forth all the time. But he fought General Zachary Taylor for two days at the Battle of Buena Vista before the city of Monterrey in northern Mexico fell to American troops. There was a very bloody battle for Monterrey. The Mexicans defended it fiercely. Um, but it eventually did fall to American troops, and Santa Ana was forced to withdraw further south. 
Then in a rather famous amphibious landing, amphibious means from water onto land, General Winfield Scott launched a massive amphibious landing at the Mexican port city of Veracruz, um, and his intention was to threaten Mexico City, to land his troops in Veracruz and basically march inland to Mexico City. It was the largest amphibious invasion in the history of the United States until something called D-Day during World War II, June 6th, 1944. It took six months of hard fighting for U.S. troops to march inland to Mexico City, but eventually they did. The Mexicans did defend their territory fiercely. Uh, there was a famous battle that occurred at the castle of Chapultepec, which is now in uh, Chapultepec Park in Mexico City. A thousand Mexican troops and a hundred military cadets fought bravely to defend the castle. And in Mexican history, this is a rather important event because of Los Niños Héroes. And you may ask yourself, who are Los Niños Héroes? Los Niños Héroes were six Mexican military cadets who jumped off the side of the castle rather than surrender to American troops. Uh, it was considered an act of bravery and patriotism uh, by Mexico, and these are six rather famous young men uh, in Mexican history, so I put their pictures up there for you. And the monument you see there is in Chapultepec Park in Mexico City. Um, that is how Mexico remembers this war. Every war has two sides, at least two sides, sometimes a lot more than two sides. How did the war end? Uh, obviously, the U.S. had a lot of military success. Mexico City did fall to General Winfield Scott, and so we basically had control of the Mexican capital, and Mexico was forced to surrender. And basically, they had to agree to all of the U.S. terms. Those terms were set out in the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. This is the treaty right here. And it is the official treaty that ended the war between the U.S. and Mexico and established the current U.S.-Mexican border, with the exception of southern Arizona. Uh, so Mexico was forced to give up all of Texas. The Rio Grande was set as the border, as the United States wanted. New Mexico, all of California, although there's still Baja, California, and parts of five other future states, including Arizona, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, and Nevada. This was a very large section of territory. It essentially represented half of the territory of Mexico that they were forced to give up to the United States. Mexico was given $15 million, as opposed to the $25 million that Nicholas Slidell originally offered. Um, and $15 million is pocket change. I believe Waldo is worth more than $15 million. Of course, there's something called inflation. You'll learn about it in economics class in high school. We're not going to talk about that right now. It wasn't very much money, let's just be honest. Uh, the United States did agree to respect the land and culture of Mexico and Mexicans living in the new territory. So anyone who owned land in the territories was allowed to continue owning land. Uh, the rancho system in California was maintained. Um, but let's be honest, a lot of these promises were not kept. For example, uh, the treaty guaranteed that the Colorado River would continue to flow into Mexico. Pretty much every drop of the Colorado River is used up before it flows into Mexico. So, this conflict is still a source of pain in U.S.-Mexico relations, especially on the Mexican side. I would say that most Mexican citizens have more awareness that this war happened than most American citizens do. Um, as your history teacher, I'm teaching this to you because I think Americans should know about this. It's an important part of our history. It's an important part of Mexico's history. And understanding that these events occurred helps to give some context to the sometimes easy, sometimes difficult relations between the U.S. and Mexican sides in our international relations. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is a rather interesting chapter in American history. 
That is my executive summary of this chapter. Did somebody say summary? Yes, it is time to write a summary. Uh, this is a lengthy lesson, so we're going to have a lengthy summary, five to eight sentences, answering the following questions. What was the original dispute between the U.S. and Mexico? How did the U.S. try to resolve this dispute? How did the war begin? What important events took place during the war? And what was the end result of the war? I'll give you a clue. Manifest Destiny, at this point, ladies and gentlemen, has been realized. And so has the end of this unit. This is Lesson 5. It is the final lesson in this unit. Following this, we will review for the test that is coming soon to a classroom, virtual or otherwise, near you. This is Mr. Blumendahl signing off. Until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.